The Bible tells us that before the return of the Lord, there will be great tribulations. False Christs and false prophets will arise to deceive many, and if possible, even the elect. We see that in Matthew chapter 24 and 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. And 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 says, Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith and give heed to seducing spirits and to the doctrines of demons. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 says, Since the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violence shall take it by force. So the kingdom of God is always at war with the kingdom of darkness, and the enemy will intensify the warfare in the last days because he knows that his time for his eternal judgment is near. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11, Paul says, Now put on the full armor of God, so that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. And verse 13 says, So that we may be able to withstand in an evil day. So there is a day called an evil day. So as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to put on the full armor of God and stand as an army so that we may be able to withstand in an evil day. So there's a lot of things that the Bible says about an army. But I want to talk about three things that an army must be able to do. Number one, an army must be able to march. Joel chapter 2 verse 7, I'm going to read it. It says, They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like men of war. Everyone matches in formation and they do not break rank. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they lunge between the weapons, they do not they do not cut down now an army must be able to march and it must march in formation and not break rank so as the army of the lord jesus christ we must all be able to find our own path and march in our own lane without breaking rank and without pushing one another because as the army of the lord jesus christ everyone has their own lane and everyone has their own path and the second thing is that an army must be able to camp. So the time of camping is the time of waiting on the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, it says, Those who wait upon the Lord, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So the time of waiting is the time of renewal of strength. It's the time where the Lord renews our strength. And the time of waiting is the time of healing and restoration of our souls. Because as the soldiers in the army of the Lord, sometimes we become wounded in battle. And we need time to camp. And we need time to wait on the Lord so that the Lord can heal us. So that the Lord can restore us. The Bible says in Jeremiah, it says, uh, My people have turned away from me and they have themselves broken cisterns that cannot hold water. So a broken system cannot hold water. So sometimes we become leaking vessels because we are hurt, because we are wounded. We are not able to carry water. And water is, symbolizes the word of God. So sometimes we are not able to carry the things of God because we are wounded. So as an army, we need time to come. We need time to wait on the Lord so that the Lord can heal us and so that the Lord can restore our souls. And also, the time of waiting is the time of seeking the Lord and hearing, the, and hearing from the Lord the marching orders. Because even though an army must be able to march, but an army does not march unless it is given marching orders. So as the army of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is the Lord who gives us marching orders. So we do not march unless the Lord tells us to march. We do not march unless the Lord gives us marching orders. So the time of waiting is the time for us to hear from the Lord if we should march, if we should wait. So as the army of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need time to come. We need time to wait on the Lord. And the third thing is that an army must be able to fight. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, it says, We do not wrestle against the flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, powers, rulers, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places so as the army or as the church of the lord jesus christ we must be able to do warfare 
because the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is supposed to dominate. It's supposed to rule over territories. It's supposed to have dominion over territories. And the church of the Lord Jesus Christ cannot only be defensive, but it must also infiltrate. It must also go to battle against the enemy to take over territories and to possess the gates and to also to be able to withstand the attacks of the enemy, especially in the last days. So a warrior bride must arise like Deborah. Judges chapter 5 verse 7, it says, A village lies ceased until I, Deborah, arose, a mother in Israel. So Deborah arose as a mother in Israel. She arose to lead the army of Israel to go to battle with the army of Sisera. And they won the battle. As the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must arise as an army. We must arise as an army to take over territories and to have to take dominion over the, the cities, to take dominion over nation, the nation and to take dominion over nations. Because Jesus is coming back and he is not coming for a weak church, but he is coming for a victorious church.